Here. Here. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. To the flag of the United States. Okay, and um, Kate McKinney is joining us remotely tonight. So if I can remind everybody to speak into your microphone so she can hear everything and all the discussion happening, that would be great. Um, so I'd like a motion to approve the agenda as written. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. And then we're moving on to item two, the consent agenda. Approval of the consent agenda. A motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll move. make the motion to approve this consent agenda. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Moving on to item three, um, informational session of the board reports. You all have seen um, Losing my paper. Okay, uh, minutes of the committee of the whole was um, done on March first, and um, we had presentations um, for uh, staff recognition for um, Karen Collins, Nancy Bitney, and Josh Fiesel. We had a referendum update. Uh, Mr. Kunkel from CISA 10 um, reported on the facility walkthroughs and the bidding window when it closed. Um, we had a presentation of the bid packets, update from the school nurse or the district nurse. Um, and at that time we had zero active cases. Um, we had a presentation um, for the CLC before and after school, update for the 2021 school year. Um, we discussed the rails reopening plan attendance level for the fourth quarter. Um, we discussed the CISA 10 shared contract services for the 2021-2022 year. Um, it is um, basically the same as last year. We just need, we had consensus to move that to the regular board meeting tonight. Um, we discussed rescinding board policy 0155 school board committees. Now that we have come to a committee of the whole um, census here. Um, also, we discussed the math foundations credit um, and presentation of school perceptions, COVID parent, parent and staff survey check-in. Um, no presentation was given. Um, the board received that information um, and we placed that on file. We had the 30, 60, 90 day planning cycle. Um, the board received and placed that information on file. We had the financial update. Um, and I believe that was it. And then we did have a uh, meeting on March 8th for um, bid referendum bid information. And that was held on March 8th. So. All right, moving on um, to community comments section. And per Wisconsin statutes 19.83 parent two and 19.84 parent two, the board will allow public comments. The public comment section will be limited to 45 minutes unless extended by a vote of the board. The 45 minute public comment section will be divided by the number of people who have signed up. Individuals, thank you. Individuals addressing the board during the public comment section shall have their remarks limited to no more than 10 minutes. The community comment section of the meeting agenda provides members of the community with the chance to speak directly to the school board. 
It is a valuable opportunity for community members to have questions, concerns, requests, and ideas heard directly by the school board and administration. Participants are asked to step up to the microphone so that they, so that everyone is able to hear when you speak, providing your contact information on the community concerns sign-up sheet helps the district follow up with you on your item. And we have one uh, person signed up for community comments tonight, uh, Mr. David Ferguson. Yeah. It Otherwise, yeah, you can pull it down if you'd like to speak. That's yeah, fine. Good evening. Doesn't bother me. Uh, hello, I'm Dave Ferguson. Uh, my son plays on the basketball team for Spooner. And um, here to address, I, I work on the road, so I went around, but this address uh, the firing of Tom Clark. Is that just the appropriate place to do that at? Yeah, so, so we will, you're welcome to speak. I'm going to ask you to not name people by name. And just know that the board won't be able to respond to a personnel matter if you have questions, but not in this format. Okay, where would I go to get answers to questions? Because that's the whole point. Okay. Yep. So you'd start with the athletic director. Okay. All right. So should I not even talk about it then? I, I, you know, not knowing what your comments are, I, I, I can't advise you on that, sir. All right. Well. Well, my questions are, uh, recently uh, the basketball coach was fired, the high school varsity basketball coach. Is that vague enough? Can't speak to that. Personnel matter. All right. Uh, from what I understand, got into a, an issue with a wrestling coach over music in the locker room. Uh, just curious why one coach gets fired and the other one doesn't. I know you can't answer. At least I'm on record. Uh, all I can speak on is uh, the, the, the basketball coach was in the daily, in the lives of uh, the team daily, even off the off season. Texting, they had group messages all the time. Uh, he helped pump them up. Uh, I can speak on the stuff about my son, always trying to build him up, uh, help him work, you know, be ready for the next season. He's an honest coach, which is rare. And, uh, yeah, just was an awesome coach. So, but anyways, if that's all I can say, I guess that's all I can say. I just think if one guy gets fired, I don't understand why the other one doesn't. He's part of it, so. Okay, if you can direct your questions to Mr. Lucius, and then maybe he can. Um... Oh, is he listening? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, you mean? Yes. The athletic director. Yes. No problem. Yes. Okay, thank yep. you. Thank you. Okay, there are no other public comments this evening. Um, all right. So we're going to move on to the discussion and action um, portion of tonight's meeting. Um, consider personnel recommendations, Dr. Aslan. Two hiring recommendations before you this evening. Seth Krasinski, assistant girls soccer coach, that would be replacing a, a vacant position recommended by Mr. Lucius. Jeremy Voltz, interim boys golf coach, replacing Jim Anderson, also recommended by Mr. Lucius. Okay, do I have a motion to approve these hirings? I make that motion that we approve these hirings. I'll oh, second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and we're moving on to item B, acceptance of donations. Dr. Aslan. So our pattern of awesome donations continues here from Paul Johnson to the Spooner Area School District, uh, an American flag flown over the Wisconsin Capitol on inauguration. Actually, it was over the United States Capitol, Nation wasn't it? Yep, on inauguration day 2021, $27 value. From the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin, Tri-County Dairy Promoters, to the Spooner FFA, $200. From Spooner Health to the Spooner High School PBIS Incentives, $500. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to approve these, or to accept and approve these donations? I will make that motion to accept and approve them. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
And again, thank you very much to everyone who continues to be generous and donate to the Spooner Area School District. All right, we're moving on to item C, um, consider fundraiser requests, and there are no fundraiser requests this evening. And we're moving on to item D, um, consider the construction project bid recommendation. So I am looking for a motion to approve the referendum project's bid bids as presented. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Is there any questions for Mr. Kunkel or Lance or anything regarding the bids we have um, been presented to us? Okay. Then, um, Kristen, we will need a roll call vote on this one. Yes. Michelle Jepson? Yes. Kate McKinney? Yes. Yes. Deb Olson? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Did you, did you, don't forget, your, is that your bag? <laughs> All right, now we're going to move on to item E. Um, consider the rails reopening planned attendance level for the fourth quarter. So the board has received an administrative recommendation. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, again, I just expressed my concern of time that we've been in the school as far as kids and their education. I know we've addressed that. Um, I know we're going on spring break. Then the week after that's another day off. And the perception of how, how much time kids are in school <clears throat> and their education, my concerns are staying up with the standards. <clears throat> keeping up with uh, time in school. We know that that's important and we know that it's uh, necessary. The other thing that I have is that with the vaccines coming out, what they're scheduled or already in the process, uh, you know, I just think the science is behind that. We can open up five days a, five days a week. So I've expressed those, uh, those concerns in the last few meetings. And so um, I'm expressing them again and explaining why my vote will be nay. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other comments or discussion regarding this? I'd just like to reiterate some of the points that we heard at the call meeting and that the administration brought forward. I've heard and understand the concerns of parents, both who want to remain at level two and those who would prefer to see the change to level one. One thing that we learned at the call meeting is that there are opportunities for our students on Wednesdays. They can engage in a variety of learning activities on Wednesdays. We heard a lot about that. We also heard the importance of that time that teachers are, have been able to develop a curriculum so that they can deliver their content and cover those standards effectively with that focused curriculum that they developed so that our students are receiving that, the content that, that they need. We also heard, and this is so important, that we don't have the special education staff to meet face-to-face -face five days a week. We can't staff. Our, our school if we're trying to meet five days a week face-to-face. -face. Being at level two this year has enabled us to stay face-to-face -face throughout this school year, which has not been the case for many districts across the state and across the country. This model has allowed us to maintain this level of instruction and to maintain this, um, the contact with our students face-to-face -face throughout the school year. I think that's critical to remember. And I would also like to add, um, we had talked about, or we had heard at the committee meeting, at the committee of the whole meeting, um, that the amount of instruction and learning that the high school is doing is exactly what they would be doing if they were being there five days a week. And while I understand that this is a hardship for some families, also kids need structure and consistency. And this is something that they have and they've had throughout this entire year. And 
with our staff, granted getting those vaccines this Wednesday, getting their second dose on April 7th, that still doesn't keep them or get them fully covered until 14 days after that, which is well into the fourth quarter, which leaves us with about four weeks or so left of school. So, you know, our hope is that we will not be having these discussions in September and that we will do, we will all be back to what we hope is a normal regular school year. But I think until then, what we have been doing is working. And, you know, what would we do with all of those families that already are doing a remote only option? And so um, I just wanted to add that. Could I, I also? think I would just add to if you guys can hear me. Um, yep, we I can think, hear you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for those comments. I think um, there was a lot of compelling information presented at the cow meeting, and I just appreciate the feedback that we got from the community on this. We had many, many people reach out uh, in favor of going back to five days, and many, many people reach out in favor of staying put. And, um, you know, I do feel very fortunate that. We've been able to be open and in school as much as we have been. And, you know, I'm not there tonight because this thing's not over. <laughs> um, so I guess I just, we've been in a difficult situation and these have been difficult decisions to make. It affects all our students and all the families here. So thank you for the information that we received. And, um, you know, at the beginning of this, we made a commitment to our <laughs> virtual learners as well. We gave that option to families that our Spooner teachers would be teaching virtual kids um, that wanted that option. And at this point, if we got rid of that, I have a big concern about what would happen with those families and those students. And um, again, that Wednesday that's being offered has been a great way that our district has stepped up and been able to give support to uh, families that need that. So. Because those are my thoughts on the matter. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. If I could just say that um, this was a difficult decision we went through last summer to even go into level two. And what we were doing is we were making a decision at, as to what risk we were going to put in our community. Not just our schools and our staff, but the entire community. And I realized that there's vaccines available. They're out there now. People are starting to get them. But our staff hasn't had their first vaccine yet and they won't get their second one for at least five to six weeks out if we can even get them done in the next week or two, which I think there's a possibility. But once again, I, um, I'm not, I don't like being in a position to decide what the risk of somebody else should be. And I think just seeing where we're at um, is as far as I wanted to go, and I'm willing to stay there. Is there any other any other discussion? Anyone else? Okay, so then I believe your motion on the floor is to approve to the recommendation of our administration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there was a second. So, Kristen, I will need a roll call vote on this one as well, please. Benson. Yes. Bill no. Yes. Nathaniel Melton? No. Yes. 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 Okay, the motion has carried five to two. Is that correct? Okay. Thank you, everyone. All right. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, <laughs> yes, that is what this is, that what we are talking about, yes. Um, okay, we're going to um, move on to item F, and that is considered the CISA 10 2021-2022 shared services contract. Um, I would like a motion to approve the CISA 10 shared services contract as presented at the CAL meeting. So moved. And a second. 
I will second. All right. Can I have a roll call vote on this one as well, Kristen? Oh, I'm sorry. Is there any discussion? <laughs> you want to just go over for the public just in a snapshot what that is for those who might be watching? Sure. Shannon, you. can you take this one, please? Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Nathaniel. <laughs> So we enter into shared services contracts with both CISA 10 and CISA 11. Uh, they provide us with services that we can't necessarily have in-house. Um, as you can see from the contract that it's uh, that you've been provided, that's also on board docs. There was no change in pricing from last year to this year, so it remains the same. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 All right. Motion approved. Okay. All right. And then we're moving on to item G. Consider the rescinding of board policy uh, number 0155 school board committees. So um, I'm looking for a motion to rescind policy number 0155 as discussed at the cow meeting. I would like to make that motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion? And just for the public's concern, what that is is that we're no longer going to meet in individual um, meetings for each, uh, um, what was it called, um, committee groups. So what we're doing is we have streamlined that so that it's two meetings a month and that we're all present for all of those committee meetings and for the public to be able to be involved in those. Mm -hmm. As we went to the cow structure, which seems to be working um, much better than doing committees so that we don't have to be here and the presentations don't have to be given more than once and that we do have enough sufficient time to be asking questions between the committee of the whole meeting and the regular board meeting. So can I have, um, I'm sorry, did I do a motion on that already? Okay, in a second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. All right, so we're moving on to item H. Consider awarding the Math Foundation's credit for the 2020-2021 school year. So I'm looking for a motion to approve awarding Math Foundation's credit for the 2020-21 school year as presented at the COW meeting. I will make that motion that we allow that. Okay. Second. All right. Any discussion? Mr. Schurz, would you mind can would you mind coming back up just to give us a little bit of a scenario just so that everyone understands what we're doing here for this particular Sure. Thank you. <laughs> so as we talked about um, at a COW meeting uh, we had some students that had mastered the uh, uh, standards of math foundations. We felt that um, we had a little problem with the identification process as they were coming in from eighth grade to ninth grade. So we want to give them credit for what they've completed, and that is the standards for math foundations. We mentioned the fact that our uh, identification process uh, was also improved in the sense that uh, Next year's eighth graders will all be assessed with our own assessment to determine what level that they move into the high school, which uh, would either be math foundations based on their skill level, algebra one, or geometry. And again, we've refined that process. Once again, nothing's perfect, right? but I think it moves towards uh, really catching and identifying kids and placing them in the correct uh, math class. So long story short, that's where we are, and that's what okay. we did. Okay. All right. And so this is a this is a one time thing for next year only, correct? That would be correct. The okay. main issue was certainly COVID at the time last spring. Okay. Great. All right. So then, um, motion. <laughs> okay. Motion to to approve that. Aye. Didn't we have, wait, sorry. Did we have a motion? Okay, and a second? Okay, oh, Lord, I'm a little <laughs> lost tonight. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
All right. So item I is consider the first semester 2021-2022 early college credit and start college now applications. Um, so I am looking for a motion to approve the first first semester 2021-2022 early college credit and start college now applications. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Great. Thank you. And so we're moving on to item J, the WIA Wrestling Cooperative Team Renewal. Um, so I motion to approve the WIA Wrestling Cooperative Team Renewal. I make that motion. I'll sec second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Oh. Oh, discussion. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know where my head's at today. <laughs> and and the, that's just for information that that continues with Webster. With Webster, correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. How about a motion to adjourn? <laughs> I make a motion that we adjourn. I will second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. <laughs>